Hello? Ah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming here today. Uh, my name is Mikhail Fedosin, and I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. And today's session will be dedicated to identity integration between Kubernetes and OpenStack. In this talk, I'm going to cover new advanced features we have added to Kubernetes to improve current integration with Keystone service. And first of all, I want uh, to define what we mean by identity integration, because, for example, authentication is available for a long time. But it's not enough. I will come back to a detailed list of features a little bit later, but now I want to say that the idea was to make Keystone a native identity provider for Kubernetes, like it's done with Nova or Neutron or any other OpenStack service. That was our goal. And in the end, I'm going to present a demo where I, as a system administrator, create new users, projects, role assignments in Keystone, and they are immediately applied in Kubernetes. Uh, but first, I want to talk about terminology, because in both systems, some entities are called differently. But we should keep in mind that, in general, they mean the same. And in this talk, I'm going to use OpenStack terminology where it's possible, because we are at OpenStack Summit. OK, so the fir uh, first, the base unit of ownership in the cloud, where all resources should be owned by a specific unit. Yeah, in Kubernetes, it is called namespace. In OpenStack, we call it project, and previously it was called tenant. Then we have several authorization-related entities for our bug, role-based access control, which is the only one available mechanism of authorization in OpenStack and one of several available in Kubernetes. First, role that is applicable across all projects, which means there is no specific relations uh, between the project and their role. So in Kubernetes, it is cluster role. In OpenStack, system role. On the opposite, if there is some relation between the project and uh, the role, then we call it local role in Kubernetes and project role in OpenStack. And finally, associations between users and or groups with a role. It is role binding in Kubernetes and role assignment in OpenStack. If you are familiar with CLI, more precisely with OpenStack client and kubectl, then you should remember such commands like OpenStack role assignment list and uh, kubectl get role bindings. And they return more or less the same information from both systems. OK, I think it's all we need to know, and we are ready to begin. In the, end, I say, uh, in the beginning, I said that some integration had existed, and that was mainly authentication capabilities. So let's cover what we had before. On the server side, there was built-in house provider that sends token to Keystone and returns yes or no. So whether Keystone knows about the user or not. Uh, no information like user projects, his role assignments was used by Kubernetes. And now uh, this provider is deprecated in Kubernetes. Then on the client side, there was built-in OWASP plugin for Keystone. And it needs manual configuration in the kubeconfig file, where you need to enter your uh, OpenStack credentials and additional information, like Keystone OWASP URL. Yeah, and of course, it, uh, it doesn't support environment variables. So you can't source your RC file like you do in OpenStack. And there is another issue with that house plugin that its code was included in client Go library, which is a backend for kubectl. And this is not a good, uh, not good design pattern. So now this plugin is also deprecated in Kubernetes. And finally, the most serious issue, uh, disadvantage from my point of view, that all namespaces, groups, role bindings had to be configured manually by the administrator. So you can imagine a system administrator who needs to create new uh, role assignments in Keystone and then repeat uh, his actions uh, in Kubernetes to create new role bindings. And he needs to keep it consistent and no need to say that it's not really convenient and highly error prone. And let's admit it was hard to manage such clouds. Now, uh, I want to say what we have done to improve the situation. 
And by the way, all work was done in uh, cloud provider OpenStack. Cloud, uh, this is a sub-project under Kubernetes governance, which contains a lot of useful things for, uh, uh, to help integrate in both systems together. Uh, and it's not just about identity. It also helps projects like Cinder or Octavia and many, many other. So take a look when you have time. I will provide all uh, the links later. Okay, to sell this. Uh, first, we worked authentication. And yeah, it's obvious because without authentication, uh, we can't talk about identity at all. But it's not the end. Then we added project name space synchronization, which means that if user belongs to a project in Keystone there, then there should be a namespace in Kubernetes for him. And of course, it should be done automatically. No manual configuration is required from the administrator. We did the same with uh, role assignments. So we, uh, if user has some role assignments in his uh, Keystone project, then he also has uh, the same role bindings in Kubernetes in his Kubernetes namespace, and of course, it's also it also done automatically. And finally, we worked client password authentication. Now it is done with a standalone binary application that is used by kubectl, and this application supports uh, envir uh, environment variables. So you don't need to enter your login and password in kubeconfig file anymore. You can use uh, your uh, OpenRC file if you want. OK, uh, now let's see how we did that. Uh, in general, um, it was done using authentication webhook. Kubernetes provides several mechanisms of authentication. And one of them is called webhook. Webhook is just a callback when uh, Kubernetes delegates its authentication responsibility to a standalone application. And it's done uh, by uh, HTTP. So when Kubernetes API receives a request from a uh, user, it asks the application to authenticate him. Uh, authenticate him. That application, in turn, uh, sends it, uh, uh, his token further to Keystone. And depending on the results, the application either rejects the request or provides information about the user to Kubernetes. Uh, but user authentication is not the only one feature of that application. It also supports our data synchronization. Now we support project uh, namespace slash namespace synchronization and role assignment slash role binding synchronization. So when user sends a project scope token, and this one is correct, Keystone responds with information about the user. It includes his project ID, project name, uh, all role assignments in that project, uh, information about domain, and so on. Then that application, before uh, responding to the API, creates new entities in Kubernetes. It is configurable, so uh, administrator can define what actually, what actually he wants to synchronize. So he can synchronize only projects with namespaces or include role synchronizations as well. Yeah, so uh, that application uses the received data to create or remove new instances in Kubernetes. And now to see the full picture, I created a small sequence diagram that represents the workflow, how it's done. The workflow shows a user who wants to create a pod in user project namespace using his Keystone credentials. And there are several prerequisites. So um, user belongs to the project, user project in Keystone. So administrator had, has already done that. Then user has a role assignment member in that project. 
Also, administrator needs to create a cluster role in uh, Kubernetes because we know Keystone doesn't uh, contain information about roles, just about associations between roles and um, users. And yes, there is no namespace user project or any role bindings in Kubernetes yet. So here is the diagram. The workflow begins when user sources his RC file that contains uh, OpenStack environment variables with his credentials and additional information. When it's done, he enters a command to create a new pod in his namespace. And again, by this time, namespace doesn't exist. But before sending a request to Kubernetes API, kubectl tries to get a token from Keystone. If credentials are correct, Keystone responds with a token. And only after that, kubectl sends a request to Kubernetes API and includes the token there. Since uh, the API is configured to use authentication webhook, when it receives that request, it takes a token and asks webhook application to authenticate the user. Webhook application in turn sends it further to Keystone, and since the token is valid, Keystone responds with information about the user. And now we have this interesting part. This one is optional. Uh, but here, Webhook application creates new entities in Kubernetes API. First, it creates new namespace based on project ID. Then it creates new role bindings based on role assignments. And when it's done, it uh, uh, responds that user is authenticated. Next step for the API is to authorize the user. So it asks the Airbuck module uh, whether user has rights to create a new pod. And now, by this time, the namespace and role bindings are there. Arbuck, using his own logic, uh, vali uh, validates that user has rights to, do, to create a pod and says yes to Kubernetes API. And then Kubernetes creates a new pod and returns information about this pod to the user. So it seems easy. <clears throat> there is no magic here, but it works. And now, uh, uh, I want to present how this actually works in reality. Uh, I want to show you a demo. Uh, in the demo, I want to present a workflow. When user wants to create a pod in his namespace app using his Keystone credentials, which is more or less the same as I showed in the sequence diagram. But this one is reality. <laughs> it's not a picture. Uh, there are several prerequisites. So I don't think that we need some huge deployment, so I created a small deployment with Minikube. I deployed a Keystone server there in a container. We don't need uh, full OpenStack deployment for this demo, just Keystone. I started webhook application in a pod, which is pretty easy. Mm. And then in Kubernetes API, I enabled webhook authentication. And also I created two cluster roles. First one is user, which allows users to uh, read information about pods, deployments, but do not create, modify, or modify or delete them. So just read only. And then developer. Developer is allowed to uh, create new pods, deployments, and see uh, sensitive information like secrets. Uh, OK. User, uh, and now user wants to create a pod in the namespace app using his Keystone credentials. OK. Uh, this is Minikube status. Mini, uh, yeah, Minikube status, that it works. By the way, by, uh, so far I 
haven't created new uh, the roles. So let's let's do this. kubectl create uh, my role uh, user. Okay, and developer. Okay. Uh, if you want to see how these roles looks like, look like, we can actually do that. Yeah. So, uh, so this one allows to get watching list deployments, replica sets, and pods. This is user. And uh, developer. Developer allows to do almost everything here. All right. Here I have a keystone uh, mm, manage console. I want to create new user here. Open stack. Cre uh, let's create project first. Cre uh, create, create project. Let's call it app. Oops. Project create, of course. Oh my God. Oops. I need to source my RC file. It may take some time. Okay. Now we created new project. And here we see the ID of the project. This is, will be uh, the idea of our namespace, new namespace that we'll, uh, we will create in Kubernetes. So let's keep it. Then I'm going to create several roles. Open stack role create uh, user. Developer. Okay, and now I want to create a new uh, new user. Let's call him John, probably. I don't know. Um, open stack user create dash dash uh, password prompt. I hope I haven't did mistake. Um, like that. Mm -hmm. Password will be password. Okay, we have a new user. And now I want to assign uh, a role user to this uh, user. Open stack role add dash dash project uh, app dash dash user uh, John and uh, user. That's it, we have done. Uh, let's come back to the uh, kubectl. Uh, right now, I'm using administrator uh, context. So let's make sure that no uh, namespaces are here. kubectl get namespaces. Oops, we have one. And anyway, it's different from this. This starts with zero eight. Uh, next step for me to switch context, to use new context. Uh, and I'm going to show you what we have here. Uh, cube config. Mm -hmm. In this config, I call it uh, user mini cube. We have information about the user, 
And this one has two obligatory parameters. First one, uh, plugin is called exec. Then you need to specify API version, and then you need to specify the path to external binary application that will be used to uh, get tokens from Keystone. So you don't need to enter sensitive information like password here. You may, but you may not. <laughs> you shouldn't. Okay, and for namespace. Here is the namespace we will use. Uh, to switch context, I'm going to use this command. Now this is called user minikube. Uh, I think I did everything. And let's, uh, now we need to source our uh, RC file. Let's, let me show you how it looks like at user RC. So we have uh, OS our OS URL, we have project, we have our username, we have our password here. And again, it's not necessary to keep it there because if you haven't entered it before mm, sending a request, that application, standalone binary application, will ask you to enter it from command line. Okay, so let's source it. Okay, uh, as you know, as you remember, I created just one role assignment uh, that allows users to list pods, but do not, uh, not, cre uh, not to create them. So now let's try to create a new pod. I hope everything will be okay. Um, probably I have a comment here. This is one. Okay. You see, a uh, year from server deployment step is forbidden. So we don't, uh, do not have uh, permission. User John cannot create deployment apps in the namespace. And, but we haven't created that namespace. It was created automatically. And that's the magic. Okay, now let's go further uh, and create new role assignment for the user. Uh, developer. Now user John has two role assignments. Now let's try again. Create new deployment. Okay, let's repeat. <laughs> uh, yeah, it may take a couple of milliseconds to do that. But anyway, you see, uh, we created new role assignment in Keystone and we use kubectl and we don't need nothing else. Uh, to make sure that everything works fine, I'm going to list uh, secrets in our namespace. Get secrets. Yeah, because we have this uh, role binding developer, we are available, uh, we are able to list secrets. Now let's remove that role. in OpenStack. Let's try it again. Nope, you can't. And it's done almost simultaneously. So that's it. Uh, you do not need to synchronize all those entities manually. 
you just need to create them in OpenStack, and they are almost immediately available in Kubernetes. Uh, now I want to oops, show you the links. Uh, first one, uh, here is the slides, so you can watch them. And all the documentation, how to deploy uh, that uh, web application, how to enable our data synchronization, and how to uh, do it on the client side. Okay, I think that's all I want to tell you today. And if you have questions, you're welcome. Uh, to be honest, I don't know, but I think it should work at uh, 1.8. So when uh, webhook is available, I don't remember the, uh, the exact version, but yeah. Hmm? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, we are working on that. And of course, uh, we are going to add uh, kind of uh, additional mapping. So, uh, for example, right now you can disable some projects from uh, synchronization, kind of uh, black blacklist them. Yeah, and if we are talking about direct mapping, uh, we are going to add uh, that possibility to uh, create different roles, uh, I mean, different role assignments with different IDs than role bindings in uh, Keystone. So there is no need uh, to have the exact match. Right now it's not implemented, but I think it will be available in a month or so. What will happen when a uh, project will be deleted from uh, In that case, user won't be authenticated. But all was still running? And yeah, it, it still will be available in uh, Kubernetes. So yes. Uh, currently, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, please. Uh, are you asking about uh, why we need that webhook application? Uh, because Kubernetes requ uh, requires spe uh, special API that Keystone doesn't provide, so we need uh, some middleware for that. It can be done either uh, on, on Keystone side as a, in, uh, and implemented in, in Python, or uh, on Kubernetes API side. But uh, you should understand that there is no uh, actual network connection between them. Uh, they are running on the same host, so it's just like inter-process communication there by HTTP, but yeah. Uh, so it shouldn't take a lot of time. So, uh, but uh, answering your question, uh, it happens because uh, Kubernetes requires to implement the, uh, the API they need. Okay, if there, is no, there are no more questions, thank you very much. 